The Savior for Sale by filmmaker Antoine Witkin sets out to tell the strange and chaotic journey of the Salvatore Mundi, a painting of Jesus Christ that's generally attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. The film starts at the 2017 Christie's auction, where it was sold for a record price of $450 million, but whether it was worth it or not has been debated ever since. Normally, you wouldn't expect to see such a painting in a contemporary art sale, but according to Nicolas Joly, the former vice president of Sotheby's France, this was a perfect strategy to attract buyers who would want to land a piece by a big name and who are probably not knowledgeable enough about ancient art. But Christie seemed to have faith in its bidders. They came from all over the world and they were all collectors that uh, you know are you know understand art very well that we know very well and that understood that this was a moment a once in a life chance opportunity the film suggests that this perception about the painting might be a result of the auction house's successful marketing campaign they promoted it as the last da vinci it was all over the news and was tempting enough for people from all backgrounds to run to the exhibition space to get a glimpse of it. But if it's not a Da Vinci, why was it presented that way? To understand that, we would have to go back to 2005. That's when a consortium of art dealers bought the painting at a regional auction in the US state of Louisiana for less than $10,000. During the restoration process of the heavily overpainted piece, they came to believe that it was actually a long-missing Da Vinci original. But buyers weren't convinced. That's until London's National Gallery had its blockbuster Da Vinci show in 2011. The museum agreed to display the work after consulting a team of art historians about whether it was legit. Behind me is Leonardo's newly rediscovered painting of the Salvatore Mundi. It's just turned up and this is the very first time that the public will have a chance to assess this attribution which scholars have agreed upon but now is the time for us all to decide is this really by Leonardo. But according to the documentary only one of these scholars were actually convinced about its authenticity and that was Martin Kemp, one of the world's leading authorities on the life and work of the Italian painter. Now, this is where things speed up a bit. In 2013, Yves Bouvier, the art advisor of Russian oligarch Dmitry Rubalovlev, bought the painting for about $80 million in a private transaction brokered by Sotheby's. And in less than 24 hours, Bouvier sold it to Rubalovlev for around $120 million. The Russian wasn't happy when he realized he was probably ripped off after reading a New York Times article that reported the Sotheby's sale. Rubalovlev got in touch with Christie's in 2017, and finally it was sold to its current owner, the barely known Prince Badr of Saudi Arabia. But according to reports, he was a stand-in bidder for the kingdom's crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. The piece was also meant to show up at the 2017 opening of the Louvre Abu Dhabi. What's most important is that it's coming to the Louvre Abu Dhabi. You know, there's a lot of controversy out there, but that has nothing to do with the fact that it is going to be displayed at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, inshallah, very soon. But it wasn't. It also didn't make it to the blockbuster Da Vinci show at the Louvre Paris in 2019. In the Saviour for Sale, senior officials from the former French government anonymously confirm that the museum's scientific analysis of the piece shows that while it was produced in da Vinci's workshop, the master himself only contributed to the painting. According to the film, that's why the Louvre refused to fulfill Prince Salman's request of having the Salvatore Mundi displayed right by the Mona Lisa. And because he didn't want it to be presented in any other way, the deal was off. 
Although the mystery about the painting's authenticity has been partly explained by the documentary, its whereabouts are still unknown, and the questions about whether its sale was a scam or just good marketing can't be fully answered. It seems like this Da Vinci code will be pretty hard to crack.